Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord and good to be amongst the community of believers. Uh, a warm welcome to those of you who are joining us uh, at home on the live stream. Uh, it's so good to have you with us and we feel and we pray that you feel at home with us today. Friends, just uh, before we get into the, the bones of our service, uh, you'll be in possession of your intimation sheets this morning. Um, there's just a couple of things that I'd like to draw your attention to. Um, there's obviously our prayer concerns that are printed there. Um, that we, the people that we're praying for, we continue to pray for the moderator of General Assembly, uh, the Reverend, Right Reverend Sipo Ntetwa, uh, our General Secretary, the moderator of our presbytery and the denomination uh, at large. There are no birthdays this week. Um, we had a busy week last week, but we have no birthdays this week. And then just to say that next week, Sunday, our service will be taking place, normal time, normal place. Um, and Mr. Brent Eustace will be leading that service for us. Um, and so um, you are welcome to join us for that service. Printed there underneath are those um, who have volunteered to do sandwiches. We are still looking for people to help us on Wednesday and Friday this week. If you are able to help us, then won't you pop your name on the list outside? Uh, Mahai's motioning, she has popped her name on the Wednesday, so I think there's still a Friday slot if you would like to um, bring sandwiches or contribute or come to the church and make sandwiches. We, um, we're pretty easy about that. Um, I had an opportunity, as you'll see in the letter that I wrote, um, I was invited by the school to go and uh, do the assembly uh, on Tuesday morning. And uh, there's a little photo there as well of uh, the kids all lined up in the quad. It was lovely just to see them and chat to them. A couple of them came to me as I was leaving to say thank you for the sandwiches that they receive in the week. Um, and it really is such a powerful ministry, especially at this time. And then on the back, you'll see a couple of other notices. We're collecting things, uh, crocheted blankets, baby clothes, food items, knitted teddies, anything like that, um, that will be going to CHOC, the Childhood Cancer Foundation of South Africa. And then we are having a, a jumble sale. We delayed it last year when COVID numbers rose, but we've set the date for the 26th of February, which is in two weeks time. So if you have anything and you're quickly clearing things out, you're welcome to pop those to us and we will put them onto the jumble sale. Also looking for many hands make light work. So if you are able to come and help on the day, um, just facilitate, take the money, give, pack things, whatever it is, and that we would be uh, very grateful to you. You're welcome to phone the office and just give your name to Louise. She'll run a list of people that have offered to help. And read this week and dropping it with them. Uh, we finally have enough to drop with the kids that we've been feeding. And I've spoken to the teacher there and she said she, uh, with the other teachers, have uh, begun to formulate a list of the kids that desperately need stationery and that are not coming to school with the things that they need. And then we continue with our ministry to the families in our congregation and related to our congregation for the St. Giles Pantry. If you'd like to bring those items, you're welcome. Otherwise, pop money into the bank account and market pantry and then we'll purchase those items. We're still waiting for the Faith for Daily Living, uh, the March-April edition, but I'm sure it'll be here this week and then you can pick it up uh, next week on Sunday. I think that's all of our notices for this morning. We then move into the formalized part of our service and we begin our service with a responsive call to worship. Which never wants to work when I... You deal with that. <laughs> so on this, not on the screen in front of you, just press enter just so we can. Mm -hmm. 
So on the, on the screen in front of you, I will say the light print, and then I'm going to ask you to please respond with the bold print that is printed there. I tell you this, it is a wonderful thing when members of the family live together in love and peace. They shall be like trees planted beside flowing rivers. May the church be one, just as Christ and God are one, that Christ may be glorified in us. They shall yield good fruit in its season, and their leaf shall never wither. The grace, the, the grace, the mercy of our Lord Jesus be with you and also with you. Come, let us bow our heads as we pray. You, loving God, are the ground of our being and the river of our life. You both steady our roots and draw them to seek the living waters. You are like the sunlight enticing us taller, like the breeze rustling our leaves. You are with us through hard seasons of summer heat and in the nights when winter's frost ice the landscape. Your love warms and sustains us. You are everything to us. Oh, let our gratitude be great and let our praise be plentiful. Let our worship be wonderful. Listen to these words as they call us to confession. Who can understand the heart? Only God. Let us confess the ways we have turned from the one who knows us and saves us. Sustaining God, you lead us through parched wilderness, places to streams of living water. But we do not root ourselves in health and wholeness. We ignore your rich provisions choosing the world's latest fad and shallow self-help. We sentimentalize the spiritual and ignore the needs of our soul. Merciful God, forgive our arrogance and our ignorance. Remind us of our spiritual needs and the many ways you are here to provide for them. Listen to these words of pardon. Blessed are those who trust the Lord. When heat comes, our leaves stay green. In a year of drought, we will not cease to bear fruit. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace in the Lord. Amen. We're going to sing together how great thou art. Yeah. 
Our scripture reading today comes from the Old Testament prophet and uh, book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. And I'm going to ask Delbert to come and lead us in that reading. Thus says the Lord. Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a scrub, like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Please bless the reading of your holy word this morning to our full understanding. Amen. I 
had to have a little laugh when I looked at this reading for this Sunday, and specifically at verse 9, which reads, The heart is devious above all else, and it is perverse who can understand it. And what makes it funny is that tomorrow is Valentine's Day. <laughs> so if you'd like to have a word of the Lord uh, for your Valentine's Day, perhaps the Lord is telling us something. Friends, it has been a long journey. It has been a long journey. There's some things that are starting to begin to feel like normal. And if you were at the service last week, a number of you came to me afterwards and said, Oh my word, it felt like the first time in almost two years that we had something normal. We had a service, we had communion, we sang a different blessing at the end, one that you love. Uh, we had tea, we had donuts, we had a time of fellowship, and there was just this abundance of comfort and normal in it. When I did Glenda's funeral on Friday, Laurie, her brother, came up and we were chatting about um, COVID in the last two years. And um, he said to me, have you been vaccinated? And I was like, yes. And I said, have you? And he said, yes. And he said, have you had COVID? And I said, no. And, he <laughs> said, and I said, have you had COVID? I, know, I knew that it had COVID and that kind of thing. And he had said, yes. And then um, he said, but it's starting to feel a little bit more normal. He said, in actual fact, I'm not sure other than wearing masks, what rules are really in place because we just all going about doing our thing our business our work our schools our lives our socializing our whatever and even when the president and uh, addressed the nation this week he said that they are just trying to get some of the laws into the Health Act uh, and into the provisions, and then they are going to stop the state of emergency. A whole lot of Scandinavian countries in the last few weeks have dropped everything, even the mask wearing. The UK at the end of this month is also going to be um, going back to normal. And so there's a lot of things that are happening for us right now that I think it is a good time to take stock of the past two years. Rob Bell, who is the author and creator of that famous NUMA series, the videos, short videos that we used um, a few years ago in our Bible study. I was listening to one of his podcasts and he said, the pandemic has taught us many things. It has released us from many burdens that we've carried. He said, Statements and thoughts like, we have always gone to such and such a place for such and such a reason. We've always had or done Thanksgiving like this, or Christmas like this, or gone on holiday here or there, or met up, or whatever those Things that we had in our lives. For some of them, they had just become burdens for us. Having to meet the expectation of the things that we always just felt like we had to do. 
We'd been in a lockdown in the hard places of the lockdown and even in the softer lockdown where we couldn't do those things. We couldn't go to those places. We couldn't gather together. And I suppose for some of us, there's mixed feelings about that. Perhaps a release of burdens that we felt and traditions that we felt that we had to continue forever. And then also a sense of sadness that we we weren't able to do those things. With Rob, I think that we've been released for a number of things and that we have an opportunity to create new things or have created new things in our lives. And there are silver linings of things that have happened that have um, brought things into our lives and changed us and opened our eyes and, and have been a blessing to us in this time. But I think it's important that we pause for a moment and think and consider the things that we've lost. There are a number of things that we've lost during this time. For some of us, we lost two whole years, just about, of our lives, of living. For some of us, we have been locked away for two years. Whether that was self-imposed, or whether that was an institutional thing that kept us from seeing and doing the things that we love. For our young people, they've lost things that I'm not even sure they know they've lost. My sister took her little, uh, her youngest daughter, Riley, she's now five, to a birthday party. She says she didn't know what they were going to do at the birthday party. Because the last time she went to a birthday party was when she was two, almost three. She can't remember. She said to my sister, what are we going to do there? Are you going to stay with me? There was a jumping castle. There were sweets. There was cake. She's missed two years of not going to a birthday party. For the matrics that have just matriculated and the results that they produced have been fantastic and we have praised them through and through. But they've lost two important years of their lives, of their friends, of their formulation as human beings, of the social, the parties, the celebrations, the things that we had opportunities to do when we were young. A friend of mine who's not married, said to me, I've lost two years of not being able to find somebody for me. I'm two years older. I wanted to find somebody for me. I wanted to think about having children. And now suddenly the timeline's been moved out by a whole two years. People have lost jobs and livelihoods. People lost income. They lost their homes. They lost family members. We need 
an opportunity to pause and to grieve for those things. Things we'll never be able to get back. Because we're moving into a different phase of this. And if we rush into this phase without acknowledging that, we will carry all of that stuff with us, unprocessed, unmanaged. We need an opportunity to grieve. Terry McDowell Ott introduces our reading today with this background. She says, Jeremiah was a prophet to his people during a stormy time. He began his service in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. He has lost his home along with others when Jerusalem was conquered and destroyed by the Babylonians. He ended his career with his people in exile. Here, in today's text, Jeremiah preaches a troubling message to the Israelite people. He tells them that they are not going home. They're going to be pushed out of their home and go to become slaves in exile. The Israelites have had a torrent, a torrid, turbulent time already. They've already had years of losing so much and being occupied by the Babylonians. The temple's been destroyed, they've lost their homes, they've had to put up with this military occupation in their own home. And now the political forces are beginning to move. Israel is going to try and make a deal with somebody else which goes bad and then they get pushed into exile away from even the land that they know into a foreign place to be worked as slaves. At first when I put these two things together, this idea of Jeremiah telling the people that they're not going home, that it is only going to get worse for them. And today's reading, I couldn't bring the two together. Because Jeremiah in our reading talks about those who trust in mere mortals and how they will be shrubs in the wilderness. And those who trust in God will become tall trees with a big root system into the nourishment and rivers that are down below in the surface. And I thought to myself, it, it kind of feels like a word of encouragement, but is it? It feels like a challenge that he's giving the people, but they're already challenged. Surely they need some reassurance about what is coming and how God is going to be with them and how God is going to sustain them during that time. But then I realized as I molded over, he's challenging the Israelites knowing that they're going to go to a hard place about where their loyalties lie. Where are you, knowing you're going to a troubled place, are you going to put your trust? Are you going to try and trust yourself? Are you going to try and go it alone and in your own strength manage this time of exile? Or are you going to trust the Lord? Are you going to trust the human leaders who will eventually take them into this exile because they try to negotiate a better deal? Or are you going to trust 
that even in times of trouble, in the heat of the sun, that the Lord will give you nourishment and strength. For us, we are not moving into exile. I hope not. I hope that we're not moving into a worse situation. For us, it feels like we're moving to a better situation. But I think the word to us is still the same. Because we find ourselves at a crossroads, we maybe don't realize it, but we're at a crossroads right now. Because we're about to start the next phase of this pandemic as it moves out and we begin to pick up the pieces of our lives and to carry on. But we have a choice about where we're going to go in this new phase of our lives. For whatever's happened in the last two years, it's happened, it's done, it's finished. We cannot retrieve it, we cannot go back, we cannot make different choices. And so we are being confronted this morning with a choice about how we're going to move forward. And then the question comes, who are we going to trust in this new phase of our living? Are we going to trust ourselves? Are we going to trust mere mortals in our lives? Or are we going to rededicate recommit ourselves to the Lord so that whatever the future holds for us we are well grounded we have a good healthy root system that if we are to experience another heat in the middle of summer where others will parch and be destroyed we will still manage to stand firm. Whatever's happened in the past two years, whether you turned your back on the Lord or whether you put him one side or whatever that looks like is gone. Jeremiah is challenging us this morning to say, looking ahead, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? And how are you going to do that journey? Thanks be to God. Amen. <coughs> Friends, we are going to sing the Lord, the light of your love is shining. to your
try me, consume all my darkness, shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. With grace and mercy, set forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Father's glory, place, spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. O river flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Shine, Jesus, shine. Father's glory, place, spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. O oh, river flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. The video thought you sang so well, it would clap for you. <laughs> Friends, we come to that time in the service where we have an opportunity to return to the Lord the blessings that he gives us. Listen to these words as they call forth the offering. God has led us to prosperity. Let us return to God a portion of all that we have been given. Friends, we are grateful for your continued support during this time and for those of you who make your deposits into the bank account. Uh, we note every one of those deposits and give thanks for them. If you would like to make a physical donation this morning, you're welcome to do so. There are plates situated at the to two doors on your way out and you're welcome to put uh, money into that. Come, let us pray for those offerings. God, you have sustained us in lean times and led us to sources of living water. Lord, we ask that you would take these gifts and that you would multiply their blessings for those who are hungry, hurting and in need of your strength. For we ask this in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, the Lord calls us to remember in our prayers, not just ourselves, but to remember those uh, in our families, in our groups of friends, and in our communities and in the world. And so we take this opportunity to lift up the prayers for the people. Come, let us pray. Trusted God, in this parched pandemic landscape where we have all been exiled into uncertainty and constant change. It has been difficult to send our roots into streams of living water. We have been distracted and overwhelmed flitting from one undone task 
to another. From one fraught decision to another. From one fresh worry to the next. We are like the deer panting for water. Our souls long for you. Be our divining rod, O God, leading us to the spiritual streams of support that you so graciously provide. Lord, we remember all who are struggling at this time, faced with many losses over the past two years. Lord, we remember those who have lost loved ones, for those who will never be able to retrieve the time that has been lost with those that they've loved. Lord, in your spirit, comfort them in their time of grief, but also show them that in the morning comes your joy and promise of eternal life. Lord, we pray for those who are on our list and those that we are praying for, those who are sick at home and those who are in hospital, those who are struggling mentally and emotionally. Lord, we lift them up to you now praying that your spirit would come over them and heal them, restore them, give them the nourishment that they so desperately need in this time. Lord, we pray for our communities. We pray for our city and for our country. We pray for our leaders our president and cabinet officials. For the work that they are doing, Lord, that is building a better life for all, we give thanks. For those who've been tempted into corruption, Lord, we ask that your spirit of justice and truth would shine. Lord, we pray for the many places in our world that are hurting, not only living through a pandemic, but those who live in fear of war and destruction, for those who are greedy. Lord, we pray, and especially for those in the Ukraine and Russia. Lord, we pray for your church, that wherever she is planted and rooted, that you would continue to nourish her in order that she might be able to be a witness to the world. So, Heavenly Father, we lift up all these prayers and lay them at the foot of your throne. And we join together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we pray that during this time you have been strengthened and that you have the courage to face the week that lies ahead for all that you might need. Receive this blessing. Plant yourselves by the streams of God's living water so that you can prosper 
and bear good fruit. May the grace, the hope, the peace and the love of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sustainer, be with you now and evermore. Amen. Please join us for a cup of tea after the service and a time of fellowship. Gloria oh, yeah.